Hey guys, Steve here, and last time we completed a run of Pokemon Blue with only HM moves. This run is going to be Venomoth. Yes, that's right, everyone's favorite psychic flying type. Venomoth doesn't see a lot of play because you don't see it much outside of the Sabrina battle. It's also not really seen until the late game when your team is already established. The rules are going to be the same as they always are. They will be located in the description section of this video, or pause the screen if you'd like to see them. Only two of the five Easter eggs were located in the last video. This video will have three. Here are the comments that found Easter eggs from the last video. This is just a reminder I will be starting with a first run for this video, so the move selection will be much worse. I used to show my best attempt within a few playthroughs. I am writing the script after the run. Please try and guess in the comment section how quickly I will be able to beat the game and what parts you think will be the hardest. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date with future videos. First off, we're going to start the game by grabbing our level 5 Venomoth and replacing Bulbasaur with the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to make sure Champ has a charm. Charizard. We won't learn a water, electric, ice, or rock type move, making it the hardest starter to face. I give it the nickname ATV as a nod to the Venomoth from Twitch Plays Pokemon. I set Game Hook to give Venomoth perfect DVs before starting. The first champ battle is an ugly one. I start with the Disable, cause why not? It's Scratch, and then I start with Poison Powder, but it misses and we take another Growl. The next Poison Powder then also misses and another Growl. The third Poison Powder hits and we're finally dealing passive damage. However, by now all of these Growls have destroyed my attack stat, but our next tackle manages a critical hit bypassing the stat drops. The next two tackles just do so little and I'm wondering if I've blown this by going for a Poison Powder. The following tackle then hits for a critical and the following poison finishes it off. By now you're probably asking yourself, where's confusion? Turns out, unlike Scott's Thoughts run, blue versions of Enemoth doesn't get confusion at all. So, this one change between the versions is going to make everything up until Rock Tunnel much harder. Now going into this run, I knew this difference, so I waited until level 13 to battle Brock, even though Scott managed to beat Brock at level 9. Brock starts and Geodude comes out. We start with our first tackle, and it appears to do quite literally one damage. I spam tackle until we lose, even two critical hits wasn't able to really get us that far. After some more training, I arrive back to Brock at level 15 in a slightly different strategy. Geodude is out once again, and our tackle is still doing next to nothing. But thanks to some critical hits and Geodude literally using 16 defense curls, we managed to get through with very little to spare. Now, Leech Life is neutrally effective against Onyx. Since he doesn't have a defense increasing move, we can use this while he isn't using Bide. During Bide turns, I use Poison Powder. What's weird is that I used Poison Powder four times, and he fully healed four times. Bide has a two to three turn timer to take damage, so that means when he uses a full heal, it doesn't count toward the two to three turns. I didn't know that at the time, so I switched back to Leech Life and took some damage from Bide. After a few screeches, he uses Bide once again. Then, I use Poison Powder until it sticks and then continue until Bide lands. Then, the next bit of poison damage finishes it off. As I make it through Mount Moon, I hear a strange sound. I make my way towards this sound. It's coming from the Helix Fossil. It says, Please like, subscribe, and comment. It sounds like some sound logic, but I need to make my way towards Misty. I make my way towards Misty because I think that she will only use Tackle because I resist water moves. Misty sends out Staryu, and I start with a Tackle. Then she uses Water Gun. It turns out that Grass is what resists water, not Bug or Poison. I then switch to Leech Life a few times to get some of my HP back. I then switch back to Tackle to finish off Staryu. Going into Starmie at 44 HP is usually a good thing. Starmie is part Psychic, which makes it weak to Bug. However, Starmie's water Water attacks are just so powerful, I'm not dealing enough damage to keep up. Starmie's water gun brings us down to 3, and it seems like this is just too close. But Misty then uses the next defend, and we get a surprising victory. Just a short walk over from Misty is Champ 2. Pidgeotto comes out, and we use a barrage of tackles. Pidgeotto gets two amazing sand attack misses and brings us to Abra in great shape. Abra is just a simple two tackles. Rattata is just three tackles, leaving decent HP for Charmander. For Charmander, I get a tackle in and it appears to be doing one fourth. I thought I had two sand attacks on me and then went for a poison powder. I then hold A too long and do another poison powder. Next is a leech life. I didn't really remember fires resistant to bug at the time. Thanks to all the Leer badge boosts, I was able to get through the rest of Charmander's HP with the next tackle. The lack of confusion has been a real hindrance in this playthrough so far. To this point, I've had to rely heavily on tackle, and Venomoth's attack stat just isn't all that high. We just barely won that battle, and probably because sand attack never landed. 
With Champ 3, things go a little bit differently. Pidgeotto comes out and we start off with a tackle. Then we're immediately hit with a sand attack. Suddenly, I ran out of tackles thanks to the 3 Pidgey trainer right before Vermilion. As I switch to Leech Life, we miss. The following attacks really don't do much and then we run out of Leech Lifes and need to reset. On the next attempt, we make it through Pidgeotto without taking a sand attack. The following Raticate goes down to the next two tackles. The next Kadabra is a one-shot with Leech Life. Charmeleon is next, and our tackles appear to be doing a little bit more than a fourth. We then miss the next tackle, and Charmeleon then battles back with another Ember. This goes on for the next three turns, but we go down in the end. It's a bummer that if Tackle didn't miss, we would have won. On the very next attempt, Charmeleon burns us, reducing our attack in half. The following attempt, I miss Leech Life on Kadabra, then I don't one-shot it on the next attack. The same thing happens on the next attempt, but with one more miss. Then we miss, and we're finished off by Kadabra. On the next attempt, our four tackles land on Charmeleon, and we finally make it through Rival 3. The lack of move upgrades is really problematic in this run, but unfortunately, we don't learn Psybeam until level 38. I'm really worried about the upcoming battle in Rock Tunnel, but before we get there, we need to battle Surge. He starts with a Voltorb. Five tackles later, we get through Voltorb with decent HP remaining. Next is Pikachu, and after our first tackle, we apparently run out and need to rely on the much weaker Leech Life. Last is Raichu, and we've got a lot of HP and no weakness to electric attacks. Leech Life is doing decent damage, but these Growl attacks are really starting to stack up. The next Thunder then paralyzes us, and things really start going wrong for us. Two more fully paralyzed, followed by another Growl really seals the deal, and we then go down to the next Thunderbolt. On the very next attempt, we make it right back to Raichu, with even more HP this time. Thanks to a Tackle crit and not being fully paralyzed, and then another Leech Life crit, we make it through the Surge battle, but that certainly should have been harder. However, this victory is short-lived as the first battle in Rock Tunnel gives us problems. The first Cubone hit me with a bunch of Growls, so by the time I made it to Slowpoke, my super effective Leech Life was doing next to nothing. The odd thing was that the Slowpoke used a super effective Confusion every time, as if it had good AI. The result is sending us back to Surge, in which I lose another time to him. However, you've already seen this battle, so I'm going to skip ahead. I wish I could say I can jump ahead to the Exploding Hiker, but once again, the next loss is the same Cubone and the Slowpoke Trainer. Once again, I lose, leaving Slowpoke on a sliver, which is very frustrating. Followed by the next attempt, in which I attempt to poison the Slowpoke. All the stars finally align on the next attempt as we finally take the Slowpoke down. As we arrive to the main event, I'm going to right away try a strategy I came up with before this run. On the SSN, I picked up Rest, and I'm sure you can see where this is going. Geodude comes out, and we're obviously fishing for a self-destruct. I just bide my time until three turns later when it blows up. It doesn't do a ton of damage, but we then rest up and hope the next one will delay its self-destruct until after I wake up. I don't get that lucky and it immediately blows up, and I have to make sure that I wake up before Graveler's self-destruct. We finally woke up. However, the Graveler won't hear any of it and blows up right away before I can heal again. But Venomoth survives on 20 HP. Who knew this moth was so tanky? After that surprising victory, it's time to make our way to Celadon City and get an easy win versus Erika's trainers. Take a look at these two graphics. One of the benefits of having a Pokemon with Leech Life is that every trainer in Erika's gym is a freebie. Every one of them is either Grass and Poison or Grass and Psychic. So all of them are double weak to Bug except Tangela, which is still single weak. With that said, I make it to Erika rather quickly, and with an Ether in hand from the rock outside of Rock Tunnel, I don't need to heal in the Poke Center. Victory Bell's first, and our Leech Life does more than half. She then uses Wrap, but since we're faster than her, we'll get to move next. Tangela takes only but three Leech Lifes before going down. Vileplume doesn't get a chance to attack, as our Leech Life does so much damage. She then uses a Super Potion, and the following attack finishes her off. As we make our way to Champ 4, I buy four Carbos. Champ 4 sends out Pidgeotto. Just three tackles later, we get through Pidgeotto with minimal damage, and most importantly, no sand attacks. Execute is next, and Leech Life nearly finishes it off, but the rival attempts to heal with a potion. Being stingy with PP, I decide to use a tackle, and it didn't finish it off. He then uses Hypnosis, and now I'm severely punished for my miscalculation. Through a multitude of barrages, I finally get to hit with the next tackle to finish it off. Gyarados is next, and we get some tackles in to finish it off. However, that could have really gone badly if he had chosen to use Hydro Pump or more Dragon Ranges. Kadabra is next, and it's a simple one-shot. Last is Charmeleon. In an attempt to delay the incoming embers, I start with a Stun Spore. As expected, he uses nothing but Ember. But luckily, we don't take enough damage, and four tackles are enough to finish it off. It's nice that we had Rest to use if anything had gone really wrong, unlike the SSN. After this battle, I then pick up Swift, south of Lavender Town, and Psychic and Saffron. Then I pick up the PP up in the game corner, the right side of Celadon City. On Cycling Road, I grab the rare candy and the last PP up. 
In the Safari Zone, we then pick up the Carbos, the Protein, and Surf. I battle his trainer and run into some issues with the Drowsy and Hypno trainer. As we make it to Hypno, I test out Swift to see if its increased power might be better than the weakness. But before I am able to use Leech Life afterwards, his confusion confuses us, and the following attack we hit ourselves. Then he finishes me off with another confusion. On the following attempt, the Leech Life does slightly more than Swift, but a confusion crit then finishes us off. On the very next attempt, Hypno spared us from the onslaught of confusions and changed this up a bit with the Disable, Confusion, and Poison Gas. This allowed us enough time to take it out with four leech lives. Now's about the time that I'd like to do my creator shout out. Today's creator shout out is Speedrunner0218. He does very similar runs to mine, but in Pokemon Yellow and Leaf Green. He also plans his runs out in advance to make sure they're as perfect as can be for nearly every video. Here's a short clip of one of his most recent videos that I absolutely loved. Some of you may be preparing to comment, but Speedrunner, what about Dig? Alakazam can learn that and that is super effective. I'll save you some time on that one. I did the calculations. A super effective dig will do at the most 68 damage, not enough to kill Raichu without a crit. So the fight will take anywhere from 2 to 4 turns while Psybeam is just 3 turns. I also don't teach dig to Alakazam because I want to hold on to my teleport longer since it acts like dig, but can be used anywhere where dig cannot. Now back to the run. Koga starts with a coughing. With our newly obtained Psychic, we take it down in one shot. Next is Muck, and our first Psychic does about three force. Then Muck misses the next poison gas and we get through undamaged. The following coughing is also a one shot. This went well. Weezing shouldn't be much of an issue. Our first Psychic does a bit more than half. Weezing then uses self-destruct and... Wow, one shot from full HP. That sucks. On the next attempt, we make it back to Weezing, no problem, but slightly damaged. We again use Psychic. He then uses self-destruct again. However, we survive on 8 HP. Wow, that's a pretty large damage range for that move. After that astonishing victory, we then head over to Champ 5. He starts out, as always, with a Pidgeot. We then use a Psychic doing quite good damage. Pidgeot then uses Wing Attack until we eventually take it down because flying is super effective against our bug typing. Execute is always a reprieve because it will only spam Reflect because Psychic is good against Poison. Gyarados hits us with a strong Hydro Pump attack, then a weak bite. But just when we were going to take it down with our next attack, his Hydro Pump manages a crit and takes us down. The next attempt goes a little bit more expected, as he doesn't crit and we make it into Alakazam. He then takes a little bit less than half from our Leech Life, and then hits us with Psybeam for massive damage. The next Leech Life does just about the same damage, and the following confusion takes us out. On the very next attempt, we make it right back to Alakazam, but with more HP. However, Leech Life still isn't hitting for more than half, so I test out a Swift. It appears to be doing about the same damage, but without the healing part. The next confusion takes us out. On the next attempt, the leech life hits on a very low end of the range. I then try for a swift to see if I did a low amount of damage with the last swift. I then land a crit and finish off Alakazam. I made it into Charizard with low HP and use rest. Charizard then uses three straight embers and deals so much damage I need to rest again. But due to good AI, he's only going to use ember and I'm just healing and waiting for him to crit. He then gets that crit and takes me out. On the very next attempt, we get two really good rolls of Leech Life on Alakazam and make it to Charizard with much more HP. For Charizard, I use a Psychic and get a crit and a special drop. The next Ember does little and our next Psychic does just enough to get us the victory. Oof, that battle was bad. I need to do something about this battle in the later testing to make sure that this is more consistent. I then go through the Fighting Dojo and level up a few more times. I even managed to learn Sleep Powder during this training. From this point on, we should be able to outspeed our problems with Sleep Powder. We make it to Sabrina next and Kadabra comes out. We use our newly obtained Sleep Powder, but unfortunately it misses. Then we get hit by a massive Psychic. The next Sleep Powder manages to hit and we are able to get through Kadabra with Leech Life. Next is Mr. Mime and a few Swifts gets us through the battle. Then it's a mirror match and we show who's the better Venomoth with a few Psychics. We're able to outspeed the Alakazam with Sleep Powder and finish it off with the next three Leech Lifes no problem. Next up is Blaine and his Growlithe. It's just a simple Sleep Powder and two Psychics. Ponyta is a Sleep Powder and three Swifts, but it wakes up early and I didn't notice. So now it takes a while before we are able to put it back to sleep and take it down with three Swifts. Rapidash is a Sleep Powder and four Psychics, but a lot of Super Potions while sleeping is annoying. Arcanine is a Sleep Powder and three Psychics. Blaine was easy thanks to Sleep Powder, but this could have been very messy without it. Before Giovanni, I make sure to teach Mega Drain over Swift for all the Rock Ground types on Giovanni's team. Rhyhorn is first and it's a simple one shot with Mega Drain. Dugtrio is a two shot with Psychic. Nidoqueen is a two shot with Psychic. 
Nido King is a two shot with Psychic. Rhydon is a two shot with Mega Drain. Next up, we move on to Champ 6, and this should be a very different battle compared to the fifth battle now that we have Sleep Powder. Pidgeot is first, and it's a simple Sleep Powder and two Psychics. Rhyhorn is an easy one shot with Mega Drain. Execute is just a Sleep Powder and two Leech Lifes. Gyarados, we put it to sleep and then try out our Psychic and Mega Drain. Turns out, the flying part of Gyarados makes Mega Drain a neutral move, so I finish it off with another Psychic. Alakazam is next, and we put it to sleep and use Leech Life. That hits for a high amount of damage. He then wakes up, and I go for another Leech Life, thinking it will take it down. But it then survives and hits us with a massive Psychic. The next Leech Life finishes it off. Charizard is then a Sleep Powder and three Psychics. We make our way through Victory Road, and then use all of our rare candies at the start of the league. Floralize is first, and Dugong comes out. We start with Mega Drain to see how much it'll do, but also to make sure that she uses Rest, because it's a Psychic-type move. I then proceed to use four more Mega Drains to finish it off. Cloyster is a Sleep Powder and two Mega Drains. Slowbro is a Sleep Powder and a few Leech Lifes, but then she Super Potions, and then I use another Sleep Powder and a few Leech Lifes. Jinx is a Sleep Powder and three Leech Lifes. Lapras is a Sleep Powder and a Mega Drain. Lapras is too tanky, and I have to change to Psychic to finish it off. The Black Belt is next, with Psychic and Mega Drain this won't be any sort of challenge whatsoever. Onyx is a one shot with Mega Drain, Hitmonchan is a one shot with Psychic, Hitmonlee is a one shot with Psychic, Onyx is a one shot with Mega Drain, Machamp is a one shot with Psychic, Agatha is next and she leads with Gengar. Gengar is a Sleep Powder and a surprising one shot with Psychic, probably thanks to a crit. Golbat is a Sleep Powder and a Psychic, it survives and then she super potions before going down to the next Psychic. Haunter is a Sleep Powder and a Psychic. It survives, and then she super potions before going down to the next Psychic. Arbok is a single Psychic. The last Gengar is another lucky crit for a one-shot. I can't believe I did this flawless Agatha, but all my moves are literally incapable of one-shotting all of her Pokemon except for Arbok. Lance is next, and he leads with Gyarados. We use Sleep Powder, but then miss, and he lands a massive Hyper Beam. I put it to sleep and go for Mega Drain, but it's doing next to nothing, and I switch to Psychic to take it out. Dragonair I put to sleep and try out Leech Life since Dragon resists Grass type, but Leech Life itself is just such a weak move that it does nothing. I swap to Psychic and take it out with two attacks. The next Dragonair is set to sleep and then one shot with a critical Psychic. Aerodactyl is put to sleep and then I try out a Mega Drain, but I forget that it's part flying type and does very little. I then switch back to Psychic to take care of it. For Dragonite, I miss Sleep Powder and it only uses Barrier and the next one lands. I am then able to take care of it with the next four Psychics. Champ the Champion is next and he starts with his Pidgeot. We start with a Sleep Powder miss and then he uses Mirror Move and also somehow misses. Our next Sleep Powder hits and then we finish it off with some Psychics. Alakazam is next and our Sleep Powder misses once again and he takes advantage of the situation with a Psychic. The Psychic takes us down to 33 but our special then falls as well. Sleep Powder then hits and we get to take it down with some Leech Lifes and replenish some of that HP. Rhydon is next and our first Mega Drain doesn't finish it off and it gets the chance to use a Leer. This will help for later and we get to heal up to full with another Mega Drain. Executor then falls asleep and the falling Leech Life does less than half. It then wakes up as I use the next Leech Life by accident, but I'm not punished because of a crit. Gyarados is next, and the next Sleep Powder once again misses, and we get hit with a massive Hydro Pump. The next Sleep Powder hits, and the next four Psychics take it down slowly. Last is Charizard, and Sleep Powder hits. The next two Psychics then both crit and make us the champion of the Pokemon League. We finish the game with level 63, with 128 real time, 451 game time, and 21 resets. Oh boy, this run was weird. The beginning was just a straight nightmare, but once we got past Rock Tunnel, things started to open up. As you guys will learn, this first run isn't the end-all be-all, just the warm-up, as the final ranking will be based on the next run and after some testing to make sure that I can do as best as possible to do Venomoth Proud. Some definite points of difficulty of Brock, Rival 2, definitely Rival 3, Surge for some reason, and the Slowpoke Trainer in Rock Tunnel. After that, many of our problems can be solved with moving around where and when we do some training. It was weird that the Elite Four was actually the easiest part of the game. Anyways, we got some testing to do, so let's head over to the next run. On our first run, we fought Brock at level 15. However, we learned that Poison Powder is treated a bit weird by Brock. I'm going to attempt Brock at 13 and see what happens. On the first attempt, we see Brock is using Full Heal every time he gets poisoned, and it doesn't count towards the Bide count, so you can get 4-6 to six Poison Powders every time he Bides to aid you in the battle. The first attempt is a win, but I try again just in case. On the next attempt, I remembered what Scott Thoughts told me about the way Bide works. If I use a healing move such as Leech Life, it will count both life lost and gain toward the count. So normally, if you do, let's say, 2 damage across 2 turns, he will deal 4 back. But with a healing move and you do 2 damage and heal 1, then you'll only take 2 back. It's a very broken mechanic. 
Armed with this knowledge, I came back at level 12 to see if I can exploit him any further at a lower level. I managed to get another win, so I'm coming back at level 11 to see if it will make any more difference. I once again win! So I figured, hey, why not try level 10? However, at level 10, I wasn't doing anywhere near the amount of damage on Geodude and didn't even make it to Onyx. So I came back at level 11 just to see how repeatable this level is. On the next attempt, I tried to change things up a bit on Onyx, and instead of doing Poison Powder on each bide, I just decided to go for it immediately to maximize my damage potential over time. He does in fact heal it every time it lands, and it isn't long before it sticks. On this attempt, after I ran a Leech Lifes, I decided to go on trying out Disable. I then disabled Bide, and Brock was stuck. He literally couldn't do anything until it wasn't disabled anymore. I do one final attempt and repeat the results and call this section solved. Next is to figure out Misty. We got really lucky last time being able to defeat her at level 19 with all the extra Viridian Force training. At level 17, I try her and even with very fortunate luck, I still lost. I then switch over to Champ 2 and don't even get past Pidgeotto. I decide to rewind back to Route 3 and add these four trainers to see if the XP will make up for all of the lost training. At level 18, I then lost to the Goldeen trainer in the gym. So I try Champ 2 again and make it further, but losing to Rattata just isn't going to cut it. I again rewind back to Route 3 and add these four more trainers and work my way back to the gym. At level 19, I actually did my worst job against Misty. I then try again and win, but with a lot of fortunate luck with X Defend and Tackle. On the next attempt, Starmie uses two bubble beams, and they just rinse us. On the attempt after that, we still don't manage to get past Starmie, even with some water guns instead of bubble beam. I then try an attempt at Champ 2. Tackle is doing a very low amount of damage to Pidgeotto and he takes us out quickly. The next attempt, I use Poison Powder to start off the attempt and we make it much further. However, the Rattata still took us down with two Hyper Fangs. I back up some more and add in three more difficult trainers, some that could even defeat us on their own. But now we arrive Misty at the magical level 20. At level 20, you will do a significantly higher amount of damage because of damage rounding in the calculation. To make a long story short, the damage calculation involves rounding down twice, so there's some factors that be more or less important in doing more damage. Levels that end in 5 or 8 do the most damage, and 3 or 8 do pretty okay, but still not as good as 0 or 5. At level 20 got Misty down to a sliver before losing. On the next attempt, I lose again. I then change my strategy to only using Leech Life, and I win on the very next attempt, even with some bad crit luck. I then test out this strategy 4 more times and win every single one of them. Now we get to attempt Champ 2 at level 21. I win on the very first attempt and I think I've developed a strategy, but I still need to confirm it. The strategy is Tackle, Leech Life, Leech Life, Tackle. This next attempt has some really bad sand attack luck and I still manage to win. The next attempt is another win and I move on to the Champ 3 battle. Now this is where a revelation happens and I realize that I never again use Disable and Teach Rest as soon as I get it. This next rival battle is the same as Rival 2. Too, except that if my HP gets low, I just rest up. I confirm this twice and then move on to Surge. Rest once again solves the Surge issue. Anytime my HP drops below half, I can rest up and let the poison then slowly whittle down Raichu. Rest once again solves the Cubone Trainer, and even with 4 growls before reaching Slowpoke, I was still able to win without too much issue. There's not really another point in the run that I think I need to test, so we're gonna move on to run 2. We grab our level 5 Venomoth and name it ATV once again. The rival battle is just a straight barrage of tackles, and he doesn't use too many growls until late. Next up is Brock, and he sends out Geodude. We spam Leech Life all the way through Geodude and finish up with full HP thanks to 3 late crits. We start with Poison Powder and get 2 misses right at the start, but we just keep using it until Poison finally sticks. Brock seems to always heal Poison even during Bide, which is different than Yellow. We then use the rest of our Leech Lifes before spamming Disable for the rest of the battle. Next up is Misty and she sends out Staryu. We're just going to use Leech Life the entire time. This brings us to Starmie. Starmie even manages 3 critical hits on us and she still doesn't win. So that strategy was really good. Next up is Champ 2, and he starts with Pidgeotto. We're going to spam tackle and pray we don't get hit by a sand attack. We succeed that goal, but take massive damage. Abra we then heal back up with Leech Life. Radtow we can also heal back up more with some more Leech Life, but it does hit back. Last up is Charmander, and without sand attack there's no need for poison powder, and it's just spam tackle until the victory. Champ 3 is next, and once again starts with Pidgeotto. The plan is exactly the same. Spam tackle, and then once again we're not hit with a sand attack. Raticate is leech life to heal back up a bit. Kadabra is leech life to heal back up to full. Charmeleon is poison powder and tackle until we win. Without a sand attack we have no problem winning. But if we have a single miss, then we have to use rest and get one more tackle and then rest again. Surge is next with Voltorb. 
I use Tackle until I run out and switch to Leech Life. Pikachu is next and Leech Life till the victory. I'm really bummed about all those growls, but Raichu is next. Then it's Poison Powder in the same strategy as Charmeleon. We run out of Leech Lifes and have to wait this one out with Rest and Poison Powder. Next up is the Cubone and Slowpoke Trainer in Rock Tunnel. We have the same plan in place as Surge. However, unlike the other opponents, the Slowpoke gets a 10% chance to confuse, and we hit ourselves preventing the rest. On the very next attempt, the same thing happens. But on the following attempt, we get through Slowpoke. Now it's time for the Exploding Hiker, which wasn't an issue the first time. The first Geodude self-destructs on schedule. I heal up, but then the second Geodude refuses to blow up, and I spam rest too early. So by the time I'm down to the point where I must use the last rest, of course it explodes right after. We still have enough HP to survive the Graveler self-destruct as well, but it starts with a rock throw and puts us out of the range. Then it proceeds to beat us the normal way. On the next attempt, the Geodude doesn't cooperate at all. I just keep getting hit by moves until it self-destructs and beats me thanks to a crit. On the next attempt, the first Geodude used self-destruct right away. The next Geodude we poison and then leech life until we take it out. Mostly thanks to some crits, but still an impressive feat. The Graveler then hits us with a self-destruct in the third turn, getting us the victory. Then next is Erica with Victory Bell. It's just two Leech Lifes for the win. Tangle is a two-shot with Leech Life, but only because of back-to-back -back crits. Vileplume is another two Leech Lifes to get us through the easiest gym leader. Then it's Champ 4, but not before we pick up Psychic and Swift this time. He starts with Pidgeotto. Psychic does massive damage, and we finish it off with the next Swift. His new Execute is one shot with Leech Life thanks to a double weakness to Bug. Gyarados is two Psychics, but Dragon Rage hits pretty hard this early in the game. Kadabra is one shot with Leech Life for now. Charmeleon is two Psychics. The Drowsy Hypno Trainer in Koga's Gym is next. We hit Drowsy with Leech Life, and then he swaps out to Hypno. Hypno is hit with three Leech Lifes while it switches back to Drowsy. Drowsy then takes one more Leech Life and swaps back into Hypno. Hypno is then finished off with Leech Life. Then Drowsy is finished off with Leech Life. Weird battle indeed, but I'm happy because the Hypno is a really tough opponent to beat. Koga is next with Coughing. It's one shot with Psychic. Muk has some Deja Vu with a Mist Poison Gas while being taken out with two Psychics. Coughing 2 is then one shot with Psychic. Weezing then takes a Psychic, but Koga uses the next attack, getting the victory on the next attack. Up next is Champ 5 with a newly evolved Pidgeot. Pidgeot is a 3-shot with Psychic. Execute is a 2-shot with Leech Life. Leech Life is just such a weak move. Gyarados is a 3-shot with Psychic. Alakazam takes 2 Leech Lifes, but takes us out with the Psybeam Beam and Confusion. On the next attempt, thanks to a Pidgeot crit, we make it to Gyarados at lower HP, and it finishes us off with a critical hit Hydro Pump. After those two losses, I remember how trivial Champ 6 is compared to this difficult fight, and decide that since we finish at level 63, we can afford to use our rare candies early and get Sleep Powder now. Pidgeot is a Sleep Powder and 2 Psychics. Execute is a one-shot with Leech Life crit. Gyarados is a Sleep Powder and 3 Psychics. For Alakazam, I then skip the Sleep Powder and Leech Life for a massive amount of damage. He then uses Confusion and gets a crit for nearly a one-shot on us. The next Leech Life finishes it off. For Charizard, we use a Sleep Powder and a miss. Charizard then uses Ember and takes us down to 27 and burns. The next Sleep Powder hits and the next two Psychics take it down. If it had woke up, we would have lost. Sabrina is next with Kadabra. It goes down to a Sleep Powder and two Swifts. Mr. Mime is two Swifts. Venomoth is a Sleep Powder, Leech Life, and two Swifts. Alakazam is a Sleep Powder, Leech Life, and Swift. She then heals with a Hyper Potion. I then use two more Leech Lifes, and that'll be enough for the win. Blaine is next with Growlithe. It goes down to a Sleep Powder and three Psychics. Ponyta is a Sleep Powder and two Psychics. Rapidash is a Sleep Powder and three Psychics. Arcanine is a Sleep Powder and five Psychics. Giovanni is next with Rhyhorn. It goes down to a single Mega Drain. Dugtrio is two Psychics. Nidoqueen is a Psychic and a Leech Life. Nidoking is a Psychic and a Leech Life. Rhydon is two Mega Drains. Then it's Champ 6 with Pidgeot. It goes down to a Sleep Powder and two Psychics. Rhyhorn is a single Mega Drain. Execute is a Leech Life. Then he uses Stun Spore and misses. The next Leech Life finishes it off. Gyarados is Sleep Powder and four Psychics. Alakazam is Sleep Powder and two Leech Lifes. Charizard is then a Sleep Powder and three Psychics. Next is the main event, the Elite Four. First up is Lorelei with Dugong. We put it to sleep and use two Mega Drains. It then wakes up early and uses a rest. Once it wakes up, we hit it with another Sleep Powder, then finish it off with three more Mega Drains. Mega Drain is our best move against Lorelei, and now we're down to only three left. Cloyster is a Sleep Powder and a Mega Drain. Since I would have to use the rest of the Mega Drains, I switch to Psychic. We get a Lucky Crit and brings us to Slowbro. We then miss a Sleep Powder and it buffs up its special with Amnesia. We then put it to sleep and spam Leech Life until it goes down. Lorelei is really annoying using Super Potions to delay the inevitable. 
Shanks is a sleep powder in 3 leech lifes. Lapras is a sleep powder in 4 psychics. The black belt is as easy as it always is. Onyx is a one shot with Mega Drain. Hitmonchan is a one shot to Psychic. Hitmonlee is a one shot to Psychic. Onyx is a one shot to Psychic. Machamp takes a Psychic and then goes down after a Leer. Agatha is next and leads with Gengar. We then use Sleep Powder, but miss. She follows with a Hypnosis that hits. Then we're hit with a Confuse Ray and a Nightshade. She then switches out to Golbat. We then take a massive Wing Attack. After waking up, we miss another Sleep Powder and go down to the next Wing Attack. On the very next attempt, we hit the Sleep Powder and she switches out to Golbat. The next Sleep Powder then hits. We then finish it off with the next two Psychics. Gengar then goes down to the next two Psychics. Haunter is a Sleep Powder and two Psychics. Arbok is a single Psychic. Gengar is a Sleep Powder and two Psychics. Lance is next with Gyarados. It goes down to a Sleep Powder and three Psychics. Dragonair is a Sleep Powder and two Psychics. The next Dragonair is a Sleep Powder and two Psychics. Aerodactyl is a Sleep Powder and two Psychics. Dragonite is a Sleep Powder and two Psychics. The Champion is next and leads with a Pidgeot. It goes down to Sleep Powder and three Psychics. Alakazam is next and Sleep Powder hits and three Leech Lifes. Rhydon is two Mega Drains. Now for Executor, I'll let Live Steve take it away. And then Executor, miss. And we fall asleep, that's like the worst case scenario. Followed by a Crit, and Barrage. Another barrage. Okay, come on, 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 come on. No, 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 not like this, not like this, not like this. Why? If you watch my channel a lot, this seems to happen to so many Pokemon. Executor is quite literally the bane of my runs. It's really quite funny. On the next attempt, Pidgeot is a Sleep Powder and two Psychics. Alakazam is a Sleep Powder and three Leech Lifes. Rhydon is a Sleep Powder and one Mega Drain. On Executor, we once again miss. However, he misses his Hypnosis. The next Sleep Powder hits. We then Leech Life, but Executor wakes up and I don't put it back to sleep. After our next Leech Life, he uses Hypnosis successfully. Then he uses a Full Restore. He then uses a Stomp, Barrage, and a Critical Barrage before we finally wake up. The Sleep Powder then hits. It then stays asleep as our next three Leech Lifes hit and bring us back to full HP. Gyarados is a Sleep Powder and then Psychic, but it wakes up and I put it back to sleep and I use another Psychic. He then takes advantage of the situation and uses a Hyper Beam for a massive 107 damage. I decide to take it out with another Psychic, but then it lives and has to recharge. The next Psychic then finishes it off. Charizard is hit with Sleep Powder, but then immediately wakes up. The next Sleep Powder then hits. It takes a Psychic and then wakes up, determined to make sure this final battle isn't easy. The next Sleep Powder also hits. We then use another Psychic and it wakes up again. I then miss the text that it woke up and use another Psychic, but by the grace of God the attack crits and makes us the champion of the Pokemon League. We then finish the game at level 62 with 111 real time, 426 game time, and 8 resets. This was a really good finish time and we learned a few things on this second run. I'm sure with another run I could probably reduce the time further, but that won't help move its tier ranking. I'm going to stick it one place above Porygon in the A tier. It didn't glide through the game as well as Electabuzz did, but Porygon required a lot of luck and badge boosting moves, and just wasn't so consistent. Even though Venomoth requires luck in some places, with some more optimization the 75 hit chance of Sleep Powder is really the only thing holding it back. Venomoth is quite literally stronger in every stat category than Butterfree, and it definitely shows. Thanks to the comments from all my previous videos, I have chosen to do Primeape next. If you'd like a Pokemon to be done, make sure to comment on this video, or any of my other videos. I'm going to be trying my hardest to get these videos out as quickly as possible, but I'm constantly working on ways to improve the channel, and that takes extra time. If you have any suggestions for Pokemon, ways to improve my strategy, maybe even a way to improve the quality of my videos, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. My channel is always improving, and every video I plan on bringing even better content. Keep the suggestions coming, and I look forward to bringing you another video.